This is a basic guide to the squash grip. A more detailed version can be found here, and if you can't see that, a link is in the text description. But if you are a beginner or very new to squash, everything you need to know is in this video. The grip is fundamental. It defines how well you can swing the racket and hit the ball, and actually how good you can get. Do you think that you can have beautiful handwriting if you hold a pen like this? No. You need to be able to hold it in a relaxed way that gives you complete control over the pen. And it's the same for the squash grip. Going to be talking about four things when it comes to holding the squash racket. Number one, the angle. Number two, the extension. Number three, how tightly you grip the racket and number four, the size of the grip. So let's get started. This is what I call a beginner's grip. It's a beginner's grip because the flat side of the racket fits very nicely against the main part of the palm. It feels as though you've got as much contact with the grip as possible. In addition, look at the racket head and the line of my wrist and forearm. It feels like you could get the ball out of the back corners really easy. And it's easy to turn your forehand and hit the ball like this. So this is the beginner's grip and it's not the best grip. I'm going to turn it. You can see two lines. The first line is the line that follows the edge of the racket down to the grip. This is where you should be holding the grip. This is where you should start. You'll notice a second line to the left, that's because that's where I hold it. I'm more of an old school player and it forces me to cock my wrist a little bit more. Now, we want this angle because this angle will encourage us to use our forearm. See how my forearm is twisting, not my wrist. There's a lot of misconception about squash being a wristy game and wrist can be used, but most of the time it uses the forearm. This will allow me to get the ball out of the back corner and I can do the same movement to get it out of the front corner. So you should be starting. Follow this line down and it should join where the thumb and the forefinger crease. There is no perfect grip. You can adapt to the left or a little bit to the right but what you definitely don't want to do is be on the right-hand side of the racket. That is the wrong grip. But somewhere along this line, that will work for you and for everybody, really. The next thing is the extension. I want you to notice that my index finger is touching the top of the racket and the base of my palm is almost touching the bottom. Even if I have the correct angle, so I've got the crease between my forefinger and my thumb on the line, I need to extend. By extending, I get to touch more of the grip, a little bit like the idea of the beginner's grip, touching more of the grip. But I extend the length so I have more control. With regard to where you hold it, some players like to hold it very high, and I've seen other professionals hold it lower down. So you can choose what, feel com what feels comfortable for you. With this style of racket, there's a, um, a small area at the top which is perfect for putting your finger, sorry, perfect for putting your finger over. And talking about fingers, there should be one finger between your index finger and your second finger, one finger. Um, but you can make it a little bit smaller or you can make it even bigger. I've seen some players with almost two fingers. So experiment a little bit, but start with at least one. The third point is to do with how tightly you grip the racket. Now, a lot of beginners feel that they need to be squeezing as hard as they can all of the time. This is not correct. When you're not hitting the ball, you can have a very, very relaxed grip. It can literally be moving in your hand like this. But when it's your turn to hit the ball, you need to be able to hold it tightly enough so that the racket doesn't twist in your hand when you make contact. 
the stronger you are, the less you will need to squeeze. When you first begin, you'll probably need to squeeze quite tightly because you need to be able to make sure that that racket doesn't twist. But you definitely do not want to be squeezing all of the time. It won't help you and you might injure your forearm. And then the last point to talk about is the size of the grip. This grip is a little bit too small for me. I recommend that there's at least uh, the side of a finger between your third finger and the base of your thumb. Now, just like the angle which you can adjust, you should try different sizes of grip. You can leave it like this and see if it's suitable, or you could put another grip on top and maybe make it a little bit wider. As with most things to do with the beginners, I don't recommend extremes. I don't recommend any smaller than this, and I definitely don't recommend much bigger than a, a finger. But you have to experiment. And talking about grips, the next video in this series, I will be showing you how to put an over grip on top or a replacement grip. I'll be showing you both of those and the best way to do that. So just a reminder, this is the angle and the extension and the size of grip that you should be starting with. As always, if you've got any questions about how to hold the racket, please post a comment and I'll reply as soon as I can. And remember that the next video in this series will be about putting different grips on, which will allow you to adjust the size of that grip. This is a subscription button, so if you think my content is useful, please consider subscribing. This is a link to all of the other videos in the Squash for Beginners playlist, and this is a video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you based on what you've been watching. Remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.